First of all, we have delegations on Climate Change Action Plan. I would ask uh, Maggie Braun to come forward first. Maggie, please. Welcome. Welcome, you'll have five minutes. Uh, if we could have your name and address uh, for the public record. Uh, we now have a new fancy timer. You'll have five minutes. At the end of four minutes, we'll let you know if there's one minute left. Please uh, welcome. Thank you, it's good to be back. My name is Maggie, Ward 4, Peterborough. So I'm here to speak on the Climate Action Plan, um, the agenda item, Climate Action Plan 2.0, a pathway to net zero. Um, last June, I came to address the council's environmental committee report and gave a brief summary on how Agenda 21 was being implemented through Canadian municipalities, through programs that were funded by the Government of Canada and ICLE Canada, as well as administrated through the Federation of Canadian Municipalities. And um, I presented at that time the Municipal Primer of 1994. It was basically a 40-page document that the Federation of Canadian Municipalities sent in 1994 to all Canadian municipalities outlining how Agenda 21 would be implemented through Canadian municipalities. So there is a flow chart. I had sent it to you all over a year ago, so you would have been able to click on that and see the flow chart that I was referring to. Um, well, since that time, that video itself actually has received over a million views worldwide. Um, it has led to many deputations of a similar nature all across Canada, um, strategic plans, official plans, as well as UN directive program implementation has been delayed uh, all across Canada in various municipalities. 95% of rural municipalities in Saskatchewan have recently uh, released a statement that they are no longer endorsing net zero CO2 policies proposed for 2050, and that CO2 is not a pollutant, and, um, and that they are no longer endorsing those policies because after 30 years, they found those policies to be quite harmful to their community and to their community's economy. So um, this is quite a wave that is catching all across Canada. So. Tonight on your agenda, this um, Climate Change Action Plan was created by Sustainability Peterborough, a group that's been operating in Peterborough for, for a couple decades now. It is partnered with ICLE Canada, that's the International Council on Local Environmental Initiatives. Um, it's, and, and it states in their strategic plan that they are focused on implementing and tracking progress towards the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals in our community. So unfortunately, the United Nations has basically lost its credibility among the nations. Um, it, it's, its goal this year was rebuilding trust, and that's because it's lost trust of the people. Um, six states in America have recently passed resolutions making it illegal for any level of government within their state to participate in UN programs or have any dealings with affiliate organizations such as ICLE. So here in Peterborough, since that time, um, we've began to create a network of our own. And we are focused on ensuring that the sustainable development policies of Peterborough and Peterborough County, as well as Kawartha, um, do not unnecessarily impoverish the current generation or the enjoyment of the natural environment for our generation. And this network um, has determined that there is a significant lack of scientific evidence um, to justify the property tax increases and the municipal expenditures for greenhouse gas reduction targets and action plans aimed at achieving near zero CO2 emissions by 2050. So the Gather 2030 newsletter, it just started out as a newsletter, it now has close to 4,000 subscribers and it's based here in Peterborough. Um, at 11 a.m. today, we released a poll um, on our recommendations that are before you. And we 
received um, 100, uh, around 100 people responded to the poll that they support the recommendations that we are putting forward today. As well, we collected signatures and received about 30 signatures on our statement of support for these recommendations. As well, we have about 25 people in the audience tonight supporting the delegations, both mine and the one after me. So um, I'll just quickly go over this. It is before you. How much time do I have? There isn't an actual two seconds. OK. Basically, we'd like you to delay and defer the approval of this plan, as well as agree to meet um, with our with our networks council and we will host a workshop for the mayor the council the staff both here in peterborough but also for peterborough township and kawartha and um, we will put on that workshop for you at your convenience and um, allow this debate to be had because basically you know, only 0.3% of published scientists have stated in their papers that CO that climate change is mostly man-made, the recent warming. And CO2 truly, it is 0.0%, sorry, 0.04% of the Earth's atmosphere, of which human activity is responsible for about 3% of that. Ms. Brock, and your time is up. Canadians only contribute 1.6 to that. So if you put in Peterborough's con contribution into the calculator, you're going to get zero for CO2. So aiming for net. So I'll let the next delegate speak because he'll speak to the thank, thank you very much for your presentation. There could be some questions for you. Any questions for Ms. Braun? No. Thank you very much for your presentation again. I now ask uh, we would welcome John Dunn. Mr. Dunn, please. John, if we could have your name and address for the public record, five yes. minutes for your presentation. At the end of four, we'll give you the one minute warning. Please proceed, uh, sir. Yeah, I'm John Dunn. I live at nine Claudette Court in Peterborough. Proceed, Mr. Dunn. Um, I only learned about this agenda item early this morning. So I didn't really have a lot of time to prepare on what to say. But um, previous speaker, Maggie and I, came before this council on June 26, last year. And I would have thought our presentations, maybe we weren't, you weren't convinced that we were telling you the right things, but it showed extreme interest in these topics. And yet, less than a month later, without anybody talking to us, you hire Sustainability Solutions Group. You launch on a whole project to advance the climate change scary agenda. And they have a public process. But nobody says, hey, Maggie, hey, John, would you like to participate? You invite, they invited people to uh, participate and have input, and they got input from 50 odd people. I didn't see a single advertisement that this was going on. Is it not fair to say when somebody as a citizen comes forward and presents to you, takes time to come here, they ought to be told. I think it's outrageous what's going on. I don't know to what extent you guys, you councillors are responsible for that or it's the senior administration that are running that agenda. But it's very, very, very disturbing. And we have a report here that ends up saying there are no cost implications. Mr. Pakorakos worked for free. Does Mr. Byrne work for free? The other staff members that have input, do they all work for free? The city hired Sustainability Solutions Group. No indication of a cost for that. These things are costly. And the work that these people have been doing over the past several years, at no point do they address the cost implications of these policies. You claim to be concerned about the cost of housing and homelessness in our community. And yet you're promoting policies 
that are going to make it harder and harder and more costly to produce any housing. All of this agenda is designed to make it more costly to carry on the lifestyle that the citizens of Peterborough enjoy today. All in the name of, well, we have to do it to save the planet. All of this assumes that there's no questions to be answered, no scientific questions to be answered. Nobody ever says, how do we know that reducing carbon dioxide is going to help reverse climate change. Carbon dioxide is a colorless, odorless gas. It's almost nothing in the atmosphere. It's been as much as 15 times higher in geographic time than it is today. And uh, the animals and plants of the day flourished. They were not ruined by that. It's time that the community looked at these real costs. And is this reasonable? You approved a tax increase of ballpark 7.5%. Would have been 9.5% if you had not shifted some of the residential tax burden to commercial tax. I'm astonished that you don't take responsibility. You don't look at these policies. You don't ask yourself, what's the evidence? China is well known to be building about 90 coal-fired plants this year, in the next 12 months. Do you believe that carbon dioxide, when it goes into the atmosphere, it stays in a funnel above the place that it's produced? Or does it spread around the planet? Does the Chinese impact mean anything? Does that affect it, something? Whatever Peterborough, if we collectively committed suicide tomorrow, so we can uh, present, added no greenhouse gas in the future, that impact would be wiped out by China in 15 minutes. This is ridiculous to be spending money on this. Mr. Dunn, That's your time position. is up. Thank you very much for your presentation. There may be some questions. Questions for Mr. Dunn. Uh, Councillor Chico, please. Uh, hello, Mr. Dunn. How are you? Great. Um, I, I just am curious what your background is in science. Thank you. Well, my Mr. Background Dunn, please. Science through, the, is... through the chair. What's that? Mr. Dunn, oh, please. Yep. Through uh, Mr. Chair. I don't have specific training in science, but I don't think you need to be a trained scientist to evaluate facts. I have a collection of books on the climate change issue, probably 20 or 30. I've watched hundreds and hundreds of hours of uh, presentations by climate scientists, physicists, world-renowned physicists, Nobel Prize winners, who have also all explained the problems with what we're being told. If you want to see some of it, people should watch Climate Change, the movie, just released on March 21, where several world-renowned scientists talk about the reasons not to be doing what you are doing. I think intelligent citizens should be listened to. People who are prepared to explain have looked at the facts. And I'm surprised that a lot of people say, oh, we're only going to listen to somebody who comes in here with a PhD in quote, climate science. Thank you very much, Mr. Dunn. Is there any further questions for Mr. Dunn? Any further questions? Thank you very much, Mr. Dunn. Thank you. We now... Just to remind everybody, there is no clapping, booing, heckling uh, in the council chamber. If you want to uh, wave your hands uh, with a presentation you particularly like, you can do that. Uh, but uh, there's nothing else uh, that you can do in this chamber. I would now ask uh, Jenny Davis to come forward, please. <laughs> 